Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good in our community. And we love talking about technology and innovation. We're here with our good friend, our City Current partner, Shradar Sankura. He is the CEO of eBiz Solutions. And how are you doing, Shradar? I'm great. How are you, Jeremy? Doing very well. So your world is all technology, innovation. You help us in so many different ways when it comes to City Current and our efforts to leverage technology. And your world is also digital transformation. And so when you talk about eBiz Solutions, give us some context for the company, and then we'll dive into all of these trends that are taking place and the importance. So how do you describe eBiz Solutions? Sure. Uh, our mission for eBay Solution is to guide companies to take uh, uh, reach the digital potential using uh, technology, right? So so that they could be a, they could be the masters in their area of business, um, and it which is changing constantly, right? So the transformation is is a constant thing right now. It's not like one once and done and you are now growing. So it is continuously changing. So our main goal is to guide companies to reach their digital potential through consulting, right? Through technology implementation, right? So those are the two areas that we focus. I'm looking at it from my standpoint of not just with City Current and helping us to shift and be online with an e-learning platform and you know hybrid events that are virtual now, but it's the idea of thinking digitally first. And so yeah. restaurants, service-oriented companies, products, I mean, literally like every company now should be thinking about how do you interface online? What does that look like? I mean, you get into the nuts and bolts of artificial intelligence and big data. So, I mean, dive into what it means to be a digital first company. Yeah, so that's a great question. So digital first is a lot of companies prior to COVID, people were thinking more about from a company perspective, right? Company makes like, oh, we'll do the digital first. But the shift has happened now. Consumer sees the world as a digital first, not companies looking at digital first. Now companies are scrambling to make sure that consumers, the what the demand is we are giving. For example, if you now you said restaurant, right? Now consumers are demanding, I don't need to have a menu in my hand. I need a QR code, which was not there before, right? Consumers are not asking. The companies are putting it down and consumers are saying, oh, I want what I need this. But today they've changed the whole thing. Here recent, like yesterday, I went to pick up my car from servicing. They didn't give me, they didn't take my credit card, nothing. I got a text to click on a link to pay online right there. Right. So this touchless and this whole thing that's driving from the consumer side, not from the company side. So now companies are trying to catch up to the, the digital world that consumer wants to live in now. And a piece of that too, I think is being driven by the pandemic. And so when you look yeah. at the trends in technology, like the QR code for a restaurant, and that's not just with chain restaurants, that's mom and pop, that's, that's like every yeah. restaurant now. Everyone. Your point. Yeah. And a service center, like you're talking about sending you a text to pay, you know, for your credit card. So Talk about what the pandemic has created in terms of new challenges, but new opportunities, obviously, for organizations and companies. Yeah, definitely. I think what pandemic has really taught everybody is how to digitally transform. Now the transformation is now picking up, but it's only a piece of transformation that has happened. So if you have seen within digital transformation is not just about technology, it's about culture. Right. And, and because that's a big part of the thing that that really didn't. Um, didn't let a lot of transformations happen because culturally people didn't want to change. But this pushed everybody to change, right? So for example, anywhere, any anytime, any device, right? Now you want to work anywhere you want to with any device you have in front of you, right? At any time. So that has changed. That has opened up so many opportunities for companies, but also from a cultural shift, people now are saying, Okay, I can be at home and work. Look at everybody's homes are transforming now. Everybody's home has like high speed internet, right? So you have all this gear to work from home, right? And then you see not only um, from home, but offices have changed because now there's a huge hybrid offices, right? So you can't sit in a conference room and go on a video call and instead of having all of them look at you, right? Now this new cameras that have come up 
will have each individual within the office look at a small square in the in the uh, video platform. So there's a transformation from infrastructure and people are now very, very used to you. You can take today, if you are sending a, say, hey, let's send a meeting invite. You're not talking about a conference call anymore. You're just talking about a Teams or a Zoom or a WebEx. So that is becoming a norm. So if you say a conference call, you have to specifically tell them, I'm going to make, do a conference call, which nobody really wants because you can't get a lot of things done through conference call. But if we are like this, right? So you can, I can quickly share my screen and show, hey, here is what I was talking about. Hey, let's talk about this. Let's collaborate this. It happens instantaneously. So that has shifted a whole lot. I'm glad you bring up the culture because what's interesting is we've had the technology like Zoom for a long time, but everyone wanted to be in the studio to record this radio show. And now because it's commonplace, it's it's become culturized, normalized, you know, everybody, you know, understands it. Now to your point, like you, we can do these interviews from anywhere, people on their phone, you know, on vacation. And so it's yeah. opened up the floodgates in a good way to be able to be much more efficient, to leverage now videos and, and do all all these things that prior we had the technology, but it wasn't culturally normalized. And so, you know, to your point, certain things have to kind of match up for it to, to really take off um, and become bigger. And so the culture, the technology, the infrastructure, all these worlds colliding and forcing the hand leads to now us thinking differently about the workplace, about the interaction, about how we do work uh, moving forward. So talk about on your end, the consumer side, because I think the consumers, as you alluded to, are really driving a lot of the change as well, including the, I want to pay, you know, touchless, I want the menu through a QR code. We're demanding that as consumers. What other shifts are you seeing on the consumer side? Yeah, I mean, like I said, the shift is changing from a just a digital to a human-centric tech, tech transformation, right? Everything is about what is a human going to do? at the workplace or at home, and how do we build technology around it? So for example, take uh, Office 365 and Teams, right? Now, what do, what do people want to do to interact, to collaborate, right? So now you have whiteboards, right? And also a new uh, feature in Teams is not only just pulling up your whiteboard app, but you can actually focus on your wall, a whiteboard, and tell I'm actually for putting a focus on whiteboard. It can go through you and it can see, it will write information. So it, it recognizes the whiteboard and now it will allow you to, as you're writing, it gives the users from the other end collaborate and look at the whiteboard much more better than what it used to do before. So those kind of small, small transformations that what we used to take for granted at a workspace is now coming into a digital space, right? So a digital is now slowly uh, colliding with your physical space, right? So it's going to be more harmony between those two. And if you look at uh, what Facebook is doing with Metaverse, right? So that's uh, like, combining both digital and, and physical space. And you can see uh, what Microsoft is doing with their Microsoft Mesh. And if you look at what they're working with uh, Accenture, if you even type Google, if you type in Nth floor Accenture, you can see what it is doing is if you are sitting in front of a video, you can create your own avatar and you can go into this digital room and even though you're at home, you can feel like you are at, in front of a board and all of you are combining, coming together and actually writing it on a whiteboard or discussing like as if you are in front of a in, a, in a conference room. So those are the technologies that are coming so that are more like a human centric, how we want to do work and bringing that so that we think when we are thinking as a group, we want to look, we are in a group, right? They're bringing that physical uh, space uh, elements into a digital space. How does that relate back to companies who say, I, I want to be on the cutting edge. I just want to be more efficient, but like there's so many things coming at us so rapidly. How do you start sitting down with a company and mapping out what's right for them? Thinking digital first, like, in other words, put all this into a framework for people to understand how can I actually use this? Yeah. So during pandemic, with all the lot of uh, uh, requests that we got to help them, we have created a very good roadmap uh, called Decide, right? So like for, we want to first understand them and then sort of take them. So what we have seen in many companies, 
people already have a lot of technologies. They have too many technologies, right? So what we are doing now is actually evaluating, exploring them and seeing that, hey, you really don't need all these technologies. Let's consolidate, right? Less is more, but let's try to utilize everything that you have. Just for example, many, many, many companies have Office 365. But then if you go into those companies that have Office 365, they use so many other platforms that Office 365 can actually deliver those. But also being all of them together, working together, you get very good data from it, right? You can see your efficiency, your productivity that is already capturing. Right. From, for example, I have set up a focus time, uh, one and a half hour, and the Outlook goes and it sets up my focus time automatically a week before. Right. So now I know my focus times. So it will cut all my digital things. I cannot get any notifications. It will not let me come through any notifications so I can focus. So those are the kind of things they're doing. And we are cutting off a lot of the uh, technologies that they already have. And the most important thing is the four things that are very, very important, right? First, you need to have a leadership that drives, right? Then you need to have a very, very strong awareness program. A lot of times when you go in a company, they don't even know that they have those kind of uh, apps uh, within their own thing that they're already paying. And then the car, car training, which is a very difficult training. Um, people just train once and they think people are going to use it. it. No, that cannot be. You need to have a very good adoption and training plan and most important at the end is the governance, right? So if we are doing it to say, okay, these are the 10 things we're going to do in our, uh, your office. If I'm going to use one note for my all meeting notes, and if you're not using it, and I will send right after the meeting, the one note, and you get frustrated because you don't know how to use it. And I get frustrated because, hey, that's a tool that was given to me and now you are not utilizing the tool. So that is the first thing we do is go and see what do they have? How can we integrate, consolidate them? And then give a roadmap for them because today, what is happening is business units wants data very quickly. They want to make decisions based on the data and they want to create their own dashboards and all. And they want to put a ticket into the IT and IT is already bogged down with so many requests that they have, which is mission critical, high secure. So instead of that, the new technology is like low code, no code, right? That's a big word. If you, if you just type it in Google, you can see how much attention it is getting. Like for example, in Microsoft, it is a power, uh, power platform. That's a low code, no code. Oracle has Apex, right? Um, uh, Salesforce has Lightning. And then you have AWS um, too. So there are many of these platforms that are giving. So you as a, like, for example, marketing head, you can pull drop, drop drag what you want and you get your dashboard, you get your data, you can make your decisions. You don't have to wait, right? So the low code, no code is really, really going strong. And it is good because business can quickly get information they need without waiting for long-term uh, three months or six months from IT to deliver because they got too much work going on for the critical things that they're working on. So all of that basically is allowing you to access information easier, quicker, and putting the technology in an easier to use format for individuals yeah. to be able to customize and get the information they need, which, uh, which obviously gives you speed for delivery and activation at the same time, though, to your point, you've got to know you have the stuff and you got to know how to use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the key is to, you should know you have it and you know how to use it and you know what to use within the framework of your company, right? So that's what the big drive is. Just even if you just take Microsoft platforms, the connectivity that they have, so you can get a lot of things done from one platform, but all the data is at one place. So you can run very quickly dashboard from different levels, from employee level to the manager level, to the executive level, right? It's like a, it's like a triangle. Right. So the top person wants to, they want to drill down, they can come down to the bottom level and the bottom level is getting their things done and they know where they are, how they're doing uh, among the peers and everybody. The next tier is how is my department doing? I have that. If I want to go deeper, I can go into deeper. And the executive is how are all of this combined is giving the metrics that we want, either it's a profitability, right? Or the productivity or the efficiency of the company. One of the things that you're very good at is identifying gaps and basically coming in and saying, okay, let's, let's put everything out. Let's map it out. Let's talk about where you want to go and let's look for gaps and challenges and opportunities 
to really find a big ROI and, and create value um, that wasn't there before. What are maybe one or two tips or questions that you like to ask? So if I'm a business leader and I'm trying to figure out, okay, where can I go? Where can I take this? What's something I can do different? How can I be more efficient? How do you go about identifying those gaps, but most importantly, identifying new opportunities? Give us maybe a little bit of a teaser around helping individuals find ways that they can leverage these new opportunities. Sure. I think what we have done is uh, we have combined the technology um, questionnaire with the, with the psychology questionnaire, right? So first understanding the behavior of people, because we can have two companies that do the same thing, but they want to run differently, right? So the, way of the first we start is why. Why are they doing a certain things, right? So we look at all their processes, right, across the board and connect all the processes through what we call is a global architecture, right? So we connect every department, their processes, the tools, and how each one is even connecting together. It's more what we call is a plumbing. And we look at all the leaks in the plumbing, right? So one is you ask them the question, they fill out all the survey, but then we go and observe as they're doing. So it could be a screen share. You say, hey, this is what you said. Can you just show us how you do this process? Sometimes you can quickly find out they're not aware of the technology that they're using, that they have so many other things that they could have done it easier. And so that's a lack of awareness and training or the tool itself is not the right tool or the process itself is not the process. So we used what we call first principles thinking. Um, so we break down every process into very small task level that it cannot be broken down below that. That's the first principles thinking. And then we look from a higher level and see all the steps and we'll see, okay, are these steps really needed? If I take this two steps from this and I put it up front, I don't probably need like four steps. But what we quickly found out is sometimes people are so, they love the steps they do, right? They're, they're emotionally connected to their processes. So first we need to think about how do you manage people and their emotions because the technology is the easiest part. Right, so that's technology is not difficult. Technology is easy. The, the challenge is changing people's habits and making sure they're emotionally uh, uh, happy, right? So what we are trying to do with uh, this is we are trying to say, hey, let's bring joy back to work. That's our mantra right now is how do you create joy? Because a lot of mundane works are happening and frustrating things. We look at all of those repetitive manual process resource, uh, a lot of, if it's taking a lot of resource, we look at those and see how can we optimize those so that those resources now want to do things that they really love to do rather than doing things because they have to do. So that's how we put, and then we put a big roadmap for them and help them to get through it. It's a very simple thing we do. If you don't get an ROI in six months or one year, don't do it because that's where you get all the shiny objects, right? You won't get an ROI you need to get an ROI, whether it could be financial, it could be even time that they're giving back to the employees so that they're happier. So all of those, they need to see some ROI. The beauty of what you're talking about too is it's it's technical, but it's also too psychological. And that's why like, I, mm -hmm. I love on your end that you think the technical side, but you also look at the behavior, the psychological side, because that's just as important when you talk about really creating the, the ROI, the productivity, the increase, the happiness, all of those things are just as important. So you, you, you run on both sides of the equation, which I think sometimes people get stuck on one side or the other, but it's like, yeah. you actually have to factor in both. Wrap up on your end with where we can go to learn more about eBiz Solutions. Where can we connect in? You do a number of um, white papers and podcasts, and you're always putting out good information. So where do we go to find you, access the information, and uh, learn more about eBiz Solutions? Sure. Uh, our website is uh, thinkebiz.net. So once you go there, you can see our blogs. And we also have uh, our all our social channels there. You can go from there. So we are now getting so much into, as you said, like education is very important. So we started like starting writing blogs about what changes are happening and how you can get in. And the beauty about right now is all small and medium-sized businesses can be as good as the large enterprise because of how technology is now to everybody, right? So it's easy, accessible to, to everybody. They just need to have a good plan and understanding what they really want, what they mean by growth. Absolutely. Well, Shadar, thank you for all you do. Thank you for being a City Current partner. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me on the show.